Um, I'm Kat Setzer. I'm the editorial associate for ASA Publications. Um, this is a workshop on how to use social media to promote your research. Um, we're going to focus on Twitter, um, but this information usually will translate over um, to Facebook, LinkedIn, um, and so on fairly well. Um, and then there will be have interact. We will have interactive components. Um, Liz, can we go to the next slide? Awesome. Um, so the workshop is put on by ASA Publications Engagement Advisory Board. Um, this is a list of our committee members as well as the ASA staff um, who work with the group. Um, you'll be hearing from Sarah Beth Mullins, Andrew Morrison, Ned Richards, Keita Jones, and myself today. Um, the EAB was created to help um, develop content to promote the research from ASA Publications um, through our own social media accounts. Um, but what we realized as we were working on these initiatives is that um, while they do garner a fair amount of attention for our publications, um, those publications actually get much more attention when they're promoted by the authors themselves. Um, so for an example, um, we had a recent article about Saturn V and we posted about it and got 26 engagements on, so on Twitter. Um, and when the author posted about it, he got 36 engagements. Um, and he is also able to post about it repeatedly, whereas we could post about it once or twice because um, we have so many other articles to be posting about. Um, let's go to the next slide. Um, so this is just a bit of an outline of what we'll be covering. Um, we'll first discuss why acousticians should use social media. Um, then look at some examples of good social media content, um, discuss some strat strategies for being successful on social media. Um, and then we'll go into breakout groups um, to workshops and posts about your own research. Um, everybody will be muted. Um, so you can ask questions in the chat box um, and we'll try to keep an eye on those and answer those as they come up. So um, now what we'll do is we'll get into our first topic, which is why, um, acoustic why acousticians should use social media. Um, and I'm gonna really, uh, turn over to Andy and Ned who are co-authors um, on an article in Acoustics Today that discussed this topic. Uh, hello, um, uh, my name is Edward Richards. I'm one of three um, authors on a uh, recent article in Acoustics Today on, uh, what do we call it? Um, social media for acoustic, acoustics professionals. Um, okay, so uh, basically, um, oh yeah, so I wrote this with um, Andrew Morrison and, uh, and Kathy Metzire. Anyhow, so we wrote this together because we're both, we're all very excited, all three of us, about um, using uh, social media for our uh, acoustical research and discussing acoustics um, over Twitter is basically, uh, I think, the largest use here. Um, but having to actually clearly define um, why we think that professionals should use uh, acoustics, uh, we think that basically um, everyone in acoustics, is, if possible, should um, use some version of Twitter or um, social media to promote their work. Um, and we wanted to sort of make an argument as to why and sort of what are some good uses and what are some reasonable expectations for um, social media. Um, and so I guess I was very intrigued to see that 50% of people in this conference do not have uh, Twitter accounts already. Um, so I guess maybe there's a little bit of um, convincing left to do, um, but okay. So why do we talk about Twitter most? Um, and I think uh, it's important to recognize that there are other social media sites that people use a lot, which are like Facebook, LinkedIn, um, Reddit, Stack Exchange recently got a bioacoustics Stack Exchange. Um, but part of the reason that we focus on Twitter is that it's so successful um, and a lot of people use it. Uh, there's a lot of ways of quantifying uh, people's use of Twitter. Um, and so one of the things that we focus on is how much um, publications are discussed on Twitter. Um, so this slide is showing um, an ultra, all, all metric donut, um, which is a way of that we are now putting as a metric on the, um, on the Acoustical Society webpage, other journals. And it allows you to tell uh, how many people are, are discussing or viewing your article on various 
uh, platforms. Um, and so Twitter is one of those platforms and we find that Twitter is very consistently used. Um, so here's an example where a, a majority of people discussing this article on, um, in media outlets are using Twitter. Um, okay, I, so, um, but beyond discussing, we're, we're gonna spend the rest of the time discussing uh, articles and how to promote articles on uh, social media. Um, I wanted to also mention that there's Twitter is a bit open-ended. And so there are other things that we can do with Twitter. Um, so I wanted to sort of ask this question to the audience, to the 50% that actually do use Twitter, um, why, why they use Twitter and what they see as some of the potentials um, for uh, Twitter and um, in their professional career. And, and you know, be partly because uh, Twitter is a mix between professional and personal. Um, it's it is successful in uh, getting people engaged in your work in ways that uh, you don't see just by um, like if you were to use strictly a research social media account like ResearchGate or something. Like there's a little something to Twitter that makes it different that allows you to have some personal discussion around or some informal discussion around your work that does seem to increase engagement um, both within the acoustics community and also within the, the larger community which can also um, look at your conversation. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so basically um, in this sort of more flexible framework of Twitter, where you can talk about almost anything you want to. Um, the, what's the, what, what possibilities do people see and why do people use social media and um, how does, um, do people even think it, um, the acoustical society could help creating um, a Twitter community of acousticians um, to continue to promote their research and the research of other acousticians on Twitter. Um, so that's sort of the question and I wanted to leave that. Uh, we're gonna move to a whiteboard um, and allow people to participate. Uh, thank you. Yeah, please jump in and, and uh, use the whiteboard to share your thoughts on um, why you use social media for, for anything. <clears throat> So it looks like we've got like, I use social media to connect with other early career researchers, get answers from other acoustics people when I'm stuck on a problem, follow other researchers in my area, education for answering children's questions. Follow informal discussions in the field. Oh, it looks like we've got a chat box. Um, in Brazil, Instagram is the most used social media, in particular among youngsters. Although we have a lot of users, I would say Twitter is not the main one. Yeah, um, Instagram is definitely very popular. Um, the catch with it from the research perspective is that it is very challenging to share articles and link to articles in Instagram. So um, it's very popular for personal and some professional situations, but with research in particular, it's a little bit more challenging. Although we do have an ASA um, account. Has anybody else had any um, experience with um, Instagram for research promotion? I follow a couple of um, museums related to sound who mm -hmm. uh, will share links to longer form articles off of Instagram and they use it as, um, well, they basically create visual highlights of what they're about to write in the, the off platform links, which if you're publishing an article with a lot of figures that could uh, be a pretty good way of grabbing people's attention, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't use it professionally yet, is our next comment. Um, find new articles that I otherwise would have missed. Oh. Um, connect with researchers in adjacent fields to my topic. Um, promote new publication. 
share memes about the fields of acoustics. Tried to promote read my recent book. <laughs> um, some folks have mentioned uh, their articles on Facebook. Um, Facebook is interesting because it's uh, tends to be more of a personal group. You, you personally know the people who are seeing your your articles, uh, whereas Twitter is a larger audience. Um, I do think it is, Ned just said, I do think it is important to remember that the use of Twitter can be controlled in some countries, which is a valid point. So it'll vary from country to country. Okay. Do we wanna wrap this up and then go on to the next slide? Um, this next section is going to be, oh, we've got a quick uh, activity. This will take like 15 seconds. Start thinking about a publication that you would like to work on tweeting about later in the uh, presentation. Um, well, let's step into the next thing that is led by Sarah Beth. Pref preferably one of your own publications, right? Yeah, preferably one of your own pu publications. Uh, well, hello, everyone. My name is Sarah Beth Mullins. Uh, like Liz said, I am the uh, head of the, or the chair of the Engagement Advisory Board, and I am a doctoral student um, based in France. So uh, in the next few slides, we've got some examples of uh, tweets about acoustics that, uh, as a board, we think are really interesting and educational. Um, so if we can go to the next slide, we'll see some screenshots, and I think we might be putting a link to the actual Twitter thread uh, in the chat as well. Um, so speaking of the chat, as you're looking at this thread, do you have um, observations about what makes this a good thread or an interesting one about research? I've got some thoughts, but uh, we'd like it to be interactive, so... We'd love to see what your insights are. I think uh, while I wait for any responses that may be coming, one of the interesting things to me about uh, the use of social media to talk about research is that it provides a sort of intermediate platform uh, for us. We don't have to um, specifically re resort to the formal way of speaking that we, we use at uh, conferences or in our publications. Um, but neither do we have to assume a level of unfamiliarity with the subject matter. So uh, one thing that I find really compelling about Andrew's tweet thread here about one of his publications in Express Letters um, is he bridges that gap between formal and informal writing in a way that's uh, intuitive, but also very inviting to, to follow up in his publication. Um, so as an example of that, you know, you see a bit of the human side of, of the man behind the research with, with his initial slide, um, the emoji use in particular I approve of. Um, but throughout the thread, uh, he's tagging the relevant publication so that Express Letters can go ahead and engage and retweet it uh, as, as appropriate. He's also tagged one of his side projects, which is related to the research uh, presented and, you know, kind of goes further in depth to some of that expression. I see that Alicio has a great point that the tweets are very short, which that's a big one. Uh, we tend to end up in technical language with jargon a lot, and that can end up with very dense uh, social media posts. Um, the other thing I really enjoy about this thread is in his last tweet showing the example distribution of the soundscape perception. Um, it, it's a very interesting plot, but it's not so busy or so vague that you don't understand how it connects to the topic that he's discussing. Um, so to sort of uh, highlight it, yep. Uh, like Andrew said, there's a tweet card that kind of gives you some context and a link to the paper that he's about to discuss. Um, there's, there's a lot of things to, to make this thread really uh, stand out as, as a good example of sharing his research. And uh, as you can see, actually, under the first thread, which is usually, at least on Twitter, where you see the most engagement, you have six 
tweets with comments sharing it, five with no comments, and quite a number of engagements in terms of the like count as well. Uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, we've got a different example of tweet. This comes from Matthew Wright, who's sharing information that he uses in his educational courses. So uh, I highly recommend clicking through to follow the link to this thread because these aren't just still images, they're videos. Um, and because of that, it, it provides a very simple but clear description of uh, wave propagation that he teaches. Um, they say that a picture is worth a thousand words, but in this case, the videos and his descriptions um, do a really great job of illustrating a point that I think all of us at one point or another maybe had to wrap our heads around um, with greater detail. Um, I also appreciate that he's sharing educational tools in a way that, you know, it's, it's quite easy if you search in uh, the social media uh, search algorithm for, for instance, a plane pulse, you'll be able to locate um, a teaching tool that, that could come in handy for your own work or educational endeavors. Um, finally, if we go to slide nine, um, this is from one of our members himself, Andrew, who uh, was presenting the paper earlier. I'll give a second for other people to uh, comment and read through it. Um, but right off the bat, you can see that he's using a lot of hashtags and tagging a lot of relevant um, organizations, including the ASA publications. Um, but also some other acoustics related organizations. Um, hashtags across most social media platforms are a great way of categorizing information. Um, so you may not remember, for instance, the name of the article or the name of the Twitter thread, but uh, if you keep an alert on a hashtag going, you can begin to collect information. Um, I think he also, does a great job of linking to the original ASA tweet. This is actually a quote tweet in this case. Um, so he's uh, sort of signal boosting uh, the way the ASA was promoting his publication in the first place, um, which again, it's always nice to have an institution to help promote your research. Um, if there's any other observations, of course, uh, feel free to stick them in the chat, but that's all I've got for the time being. I think we can move on to the next slide. So our next section is um, how can you successfully use social media, which will be Kita and myself presenting. Um, Kita, you can take over. <laughs> Hi. Um, so uh, you've heard a lot just kind of broadly speaking about why you might want to uh, use social media. Uh, but maybe you have questions about how you can successfully do it. So you've seen some examples. Um, so let's find out how. So we can go to the next slide. And um, the first thing is to uh, make a profile. So a good number of you indicated that you actually don't have a Twitter account. Maybe you have other social accounts um, and these tips apply to other social accounts as well. Um, but a good idea is to have a real picture of your face for your profile. Um, You'll notice that in the example below of uh, Kent Gee's Twitter profile that he doesn't meet all of these requirements. So you don't need to do everything on this list. These are just some um, tips to help guide you. So have a picture of who you are, um, especially if your username isn't maybe your full name. Uh, maybe people will, will recognize a photo of you. Um, you can use your real name if you're comfortable doing that. Uh, we encourage you to include your institutional affiliation um, in your description. And it can be really fun to just add a background image that kind of is a, a symbol or really conveys what kind of research you do, what kind of work you do. Um, and it might just be a fun image to include. Uh, and like we said, you don't have to do everything, um, but ticking off a couple is, is useful. Um, and next slide. Um, so next up is um, to make the most impact with your social media presence, um, you want to build your audience um, so that more people are seeing your posts. Um, it can seem intimidating at first, but it's actually not that hard. Um, 
our first tip is to search for hashtags relevant to your field. Um, as Sarah Beth had mentioned before, um, it's kind of a keyword that will um, tell people kind of what a nugget of what that topic of that tweet is. Um, so um, you'll see who's currently posting about these topics on social media, um, and then you can follow them. Um, frequently folks will end up following you back this way. Um, we'll have some suggestions for hashtags later in this presentation. Um, oh, we've got a question from, for Kita. Some tips for the profile pick. Um, yes. Um, generally speaking, it, it's usually fine to have a professional photo if you want to have one. Um, as has been mentioned, Twitter and in general social media platforms are kind of in this middle ground of, is it a professional site? Is it a uh, for fun site? And you'll see here, like this example with uh, Andy's picture is that it's not a, you know, a professional headshot. It's kind of a fun um, uh, cartoon picture of uh, Andy. And so I think that it's really up to you in terms of where you want to go with your profile picture. Um, generally speaking, in terms of like, uh, you, uh, for a professional outlook, you probably don't want anything that's like lewd or crude, um, but something that is um, family friendly is perfectly acceptable. <laughs> Thank you, Kita. Um, so, um, after searching for hashtags, um, um, once you find some people and organizations to follow, start commenting on liking and sharing their articles and posts. Um, this is how you join the conversation. Um, when people see you engaging with their content, um, they are more likely to engage with you <laughs> and your content. Um, it's helpful to set aside time every day to engage with social media. Um, just consistency helps you build those connections. Um, and for yourself, make sure to clarify your goals on social media. Um, are you trying to promote your research? Are you more interested in just working on scientific communication in general? Um, or are you trying to network with other members in your field? Um, figuring out what you want to do with um, your time on or get from your time on social media um, will help you focus how you're, you engage with it. Um, we can go to the next slide. So to that end, um, the ASA publications team has actually come up with a guide to help you in kind of starting on this effort, or maybe you're already um, on social media and you just um, want some more resources. So Kat's gonna put in chat a link to the full uh, guide, um, but I'm just going to go over some of the quick highlights here. So. A good way to start is to just use a template for your tweeting, whether it's on Twitter or um, Facebook or LinkedIn, wherever it is. Um, here, it's a very simple tweet. So here you can say something like, read my article published with at acoustics or at acoustics org in, and then wherever you publish that, and then come up with a one sentence summary that's relatively jargon free, um, and be sure you include uh, your DOI link. Um, it's always a good idea to include an image with your post. Um, good images, it can be a figure, but hopefully the figure is relatively standalone um, so people can understand what the figure says or what it's claiming um, just from that figure. Uh, but they might be more interested to go to the article and find out more details. If your uh, figure is really dense or really um, requires that the uh, reader have read the, you know, three pages before the figure. It's maybe not a great figure for um, a social post. Um, you could also consider using a, a copyright free image, especially if you're writing about animals or babies and to just include uh, pictures of those, um, of those since people like uh, pictures of babies and animals, especially baby animals. Um, you should also include relevant hashtags like acoustics, um, academic Twitter, signal processing. Um, there's a question in chat that's asking about how to search for hashtags. Um, we do include a list of hashtags in the guide, um, but a simple way is to look at your tweet and if there are any, if there are things that you consider keywords, those might already be hashtags. And so you can search to see if those, if people are using those hashtags. Um, and you can also follow people who are in similar fields as you um, and see what hashtags they use. Um, and then you can start to follow them. And then the last thing here that we've already said is just to try and avoid jargon. Um, you want 
because on Twitter and really any platform, um, if the message is already really dense or difficult to understand, you might not be able to convince a kind of casual reader to click on and read more and read the research. Um, so if you kind of make an engaging hook on your tweet or on your Facebook post, they're probably be more likely to click through and access your article. Um, next slide. Um, so other tips and tricks. Um, so a couple of things that aren't on this slide, um, but that are good to know. Um, Twitter has a character limit, so you have to stick to 280 characters. Um, but if you noticed in our earlier examples, um, you can do threads of multiple tweets um, if you feel it's difficult to stick to one tweet. Um, also, there is no edit function in Twitter. So once you create a post, um, you have to delete it to make changes and just repost again. Um, this is particularly annoying with threads. So you just proofread everything ahead of time um, and then you don't have to go through the hassle of that. Um, Facebook does let you edit. Um, I believe LinkedIn lets you edit. Um, it's just a quirk of Twitter. Um, so um, make sure you include a link to the article in your bio. Um, this way people, if, if people visit your profile, um, the first thing they'll see is your latest research. Um, kind of similarly, you can also pin posts um, to the top of your profile on most, on many social media accounts actually. Um, um, so then that will also allow it to, people to see that it's, you know, um, front and center. Um, this is really good if you've got like a, thread that you really liked that you wrote about your post or your article that you want people to see, you can pin that up there. Um, don't be shy. Um, if you see posts about news or other scientific articles that tie into your research, um, you can respond by sharing your research and explaining why it's relevant. Um, this will introduce you to people who are outside of your immediate circle. Um, and finally, don't just post about your research once. Um, with any social media platform, um, old content gets pushed down by newer content pretty continuously. Um, so you wanna keep posting about your article a few times over the month after um, publication so folks don't miss your article. Um, and then let's go to the next slide. Um, so these are some resources. Um, these are actually all linked to in the social media guide that I just link to in the chat box. Um, and I will also put links to all these, um, all these articles on here. Um, and then, um, let's see. And then on the next page, there are some hashtags. Um, does anybody have any hashtags? Um, you can peruse this list. And then if there are any other hashtags that you think that we should include, um, drop them in the chat box right now. Oh, okay. So we've got a, somebody who's got a, um, an acoustical engineering um, Instagram account with article mockups to help engage people. Okay, anthropogenic noise. That's a good one. Um, one tip that I've heard um, for accessibility is if you are doing um, hashtags um, and it's a multiple word hashtag, you wanna use a capital letter at the beginning of each word so that screen readers can um, differentiate the words in the hashtag. Um, noise impact, vibration control. Okay, very cool. Um, so let's move on to the next slide, which is our exciting activity. Um, so we're gonna, um, have you guys break into breakout groups. We'll put um, engagement advisory board members into each uh, group to help guide the discussion. Um, and you're going to take that publication that you selected earlier that we talked about earlier in the session um, and come up with a tweet or Twitter thread um, and workshop it with your small group. Um, I will sort you all into breakout groups now. How did that go for folks? Anybody wanna mention in the chat box how their discussion went? or anything they learned? Well, you guys can, if you have anything you wanna say, put it in the chat box. Um, thank you, Lena, very helpful. Um, so what do you do next after this point? Um, so first post the thread you just came up with on Twitter. Um, you could also 
posted on LinkedIn or uh, Facebook or wherever you pref your preferred platform. Um, and then you can like, share, and comment on other folks' threads. Um, so if you want to have people follow you on social media or on Twitter, feel free to drop your, um, your name in the chat box and folks can follow you. Um, start looking at some of those hashtags, searching the hashtags in Twitter and see if you can find anything related. Um, um, and just try to build up an audience like we've been talking about. Um, we will be doing a tweet up um, at ASA 183 um, the, in Nashville. Um, so keep an eye out on our, um, our official ASA headquarters and ASA um, publications accounts um, for more information about that as we approach the meeting. Um, and finally, there will be a tutorial on effective media interactions at the Nashville meeting. Um, if you're interested in learning more about ways to promote your research, be sure to sign up for that. Um, so um, thanks for attending our webinar. Um, a recording will be available at the end of next week. Um, as I mentioned before, you can also visit our social media guide on the ASA website, um, which I'll link to in the chat box. Um, the website includes all of the resources mentioned in this presentation, plus some other ideas for content. Um, and when you exit the meeting, you will see a post-meeting survey. We'd appreciate it if you'd give us some feedback um, and have a great day.